what you are essentially saying is that you can change your race and you can't change your race. I'm Korean, you know, people need to accept that. Tell me how you racially identify. I identify as Korean. I used to live in Korea. I was living there for one year. I love the culture, I love the history, the people. You know, I've put myself through a lot of pain. I've had a lot of surgical procedures to have more of a Korean aesthetic. I spend a lot of time learning the language, learning how to cook Korean foods. I came out earlier this year sharing that with the world. People didn't really get it. Not everybody will understand straight away, but I hope over time people will be kind of more accepting with me. Transracial does not exist. And I think it is very, very harmful for us to push the narrative that it is possible to switch races. I was not happy the way I was. So I went to Korea and I had the most incredible experience of my life. It changed me, gave me happiness, and people have no right to take that happiness away from me. I can't sit up here and say, oh, I'm suddenly a white woman. And if you as a white person say, oh, I can be black or I can be Korean and I can't swap and benefit from the privilege that you benefit from, then it's clearly not an equal exchange. Because whiteness in this country has been set up in a way, how I interact in the police, how I interact with the medical system can result in me dying. Cultural appropriation essentially dictates people who are ethnic minority Whatever they do isn't really of value. You don't deserve to be associated with something that you've created because a white person has either renamed it or used it for their profit. And you are not a Korean man. No matter how much surgery you do, no matter how much of the aesthetic you adopt. Nobody can take away what a minority group has been through. But I think when we do combine cultures and millions and millions of people now do almost adopt a lot of the Korean cultural aspects because through K-pop or K-drama, they love it so much, they then start adopting those. Whether that's the hairstyle, whether that's the fashion style, whether they want to go and live in Korea, we all have the right to choose how we identify, to be who we want to be. I'm Korean, you know, people need to accept that. I think your skin colour has a lot to do with everything you're doing. I think we need to recognise that white supremacy is a global issue. What you are essentially saying is that you can change your race and you can't change your race. And I think if you don't recognise that power imbalance in what you're doing and how it's disrespectful to me, you're just kind of proving the point that you're doing this for money and attention. No, I agree with that. Every person that was you know, born Asian, they do go through these struggles. But I understand what you're saying in terms of white privilege. I've never had that experience, you know, but I am not one of those people. I am completely different. So I don't like to be put in the same category as someone like that. I understand some people might get offended by what I do, but I'm not actually going out there doing bad things. I'm not doing anything to hurt people. I'm just living my truth. I'm doing what makes me happy. So you identify as queer? Right? Non-binary. Mm -hmm. Non-binary, mm -hmm. okay, I recognise that. Thank you. So if you as a non-binary person are adopting the culture of a minority in a minority because we know that the queer experience in Korea is you know, It's very difficult, that's why I was speaking up and actually I helped a lot of people by doing that. What you are doing is really giving white saviour, like it really is, because you seem to think that you can adopt the oppressions of minorities. What do you think so, you can do as someone who is so far removed from that experience? These people are throwing for their lives. So do you think it's better for no one to say anything and speak up for these people? I'm speaking up for these people. I'm trying to help these people. You centre those who are affected. You don't centre yourself. And that's my problem with you. Boy, it's better than doing nothing. What do you do, what do, you do to help people around the world? You can't ask you me. You don't, protest, get to, you, do you, don't, you don't get to things. ask me whether I go to protest or but what I do. But you're criticising me for doing something which I'm actually helping a lot of people. You I think do you're have, helping people by taking the picture? You don't get to question me and I'm not even going to entertain well, you. Well, you don't get to question me. Yes, I do. Well, I just did, so what's up? Well, why can't I question you? Because I think it's, well, you're not questioning me because you want to understand what I go through or what I'm doing. You're questioning me because you want to try and find a hole in what I'm saying. So I understand exactly what you're saying. No one can take away someone's lived experience. But I do feel we're at a, a time in history where we can embrace other cultures. You know, it's, it's great to be multicultural. It's great to be diverse. And of course, people do appropriate cultures. But for me, I'm appreciating other cultures. And I feel that is a good thing. And I think that will help break down cultural barriers. A lot of people say, oh, we're a different stage in society now. We're really not. We're not far removed. We've had BLM and Asian hate all in the same year. If that can happen at, at still at this point, we haven't really made progress as a society enough for all of us to say that we can be transracial or we can swap races or we can adopt aspects of one's culture without causing them harm or without their permission. There's a way you can interact with a culture without disrespecting or disregarding their lived experiences. I engage with Korean culture, but I will always be a black woman, period. 
I don't think he understands my lived experience. To me, transracial is not a real thing. I respect people that have a different opinion, they might not agree with me. Nothing has changed, I still identify as transracial and Korean, I will always identify this way. I am proud of how I stood my ground. Whatever excuse Oli came up with, I was able to dismantle it and I think that's very important.